Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about the results of Free Code Camp's 20,000 people surveyed not too long ago. You may remember the video where I tried and do a little promotion so that people could uh, go and put in their inputs. But uh, th I, I, I love this sort of stuff because it really, I think what people find out is that you'll read through here and you'll see that your goals what it is you're trying to do a lot of people are in the same rut a lot or a lot of people are in the same area going through it and you're not alone in this case we have 20,000 people um thanks to uh quincy who uh, uh posted the results of their data so let's go ahead and go through it to it so uh you can get a quick summary it was over 20,000 students uh the the prereq was that you've been coding for five years or less right so you get a little bit of a, a goal of what, what, so goals, what's everybody trying to do? Some people just want to work for a company. That's fine. Uh, some people want to start your own company. Some people want to freelance. Some people want to work for a startup, a multinational corporation. So some people want to work for the biggest companies, uh, whether that's for money or other reasons, but you can see that it's kind of split all around. Everyone's kind of learning code for their own, for their own reason. Um, in this case, most people are trying to be web developers. Um, full stack, front end, back end. No, no big surprise here that as we're going, but well, that's not it. Uh, quality assurance engineer, that's QA. A lot of a lot of people don't know about QA or product manager. And I've, I've talked about this a, a little bit in the past that, hey, there's not only front end, back end, and full stack. There's other positions that you may be better suited for. Um, game developer, data scientist, user experience designer, information security, DevOps. So there's a lot of different roles. And I hope you learn about those if, if if maybe web development's not for you, but you still want to work as a, in sort of the same, in, in basically one of the one of the strongest industries you can get into at the end of the day. So um, of the of the nine thousand people who answered this question, uh, how many uh, who's who's applying for jobs in the next twelve months? Apparently, seventeen percent immediately. So people are actively who are using Free Code Camp and other resources as well are actively applying and uh let's see 28 percent. so within the next six months people plan on on uh, applying which is pretty reasonable right i think you can learn a lot in six months um 50 of them want to work remote uh want to work in an office as opposed to working remotely down for 50 so this doesn't surprise me i think more and more uh you're gonna get a younger generation that is they they understand that hey i can work at home at a computer um and they're, you know, they're going to be more enticed to work from home or have no preference at the very least where, hey, it'd be great if I worked remote, but I still want that paycheck in the office. So not, not too, not too much. This I'm like, I like to see this. This was probably my, one of my more favorite things about the survey is that 77% of people are willing to relocate for a job. So what does this tell you? Uh, well, one, that people are willing to step outside their comfort zone and move and the 23 percent who are saying no might be doing themselves a, a a disservice because you're not only competing with the developers in your area you're competing with the developers trying to move into your area so are applying elsewhere i'm a great example of this i'm part of that 77 percent uh where i was in california now i'm in florida and so those those tampa developers are competing with me all the way from los angeles right um so it, it also opens you up to a lot more positions well that, that's pretty cool so um uh and no no surprise that free code camp's the number one learning resource stack overflow w3 schools code academy um uh, MDN, all these are sort of the great resources. Udemy, CSS Tricks is a is a great um, site as well if you're if you're bad with CSS like I am. Udacity, uh, I feel like Udacity, Coursera, Udemy, I we could probably have thrown them all into one. Uh, Treehouse is another one at thirteen percent. The Odin Project's not too not too surprising considering that I believe that is a Ruby on Rails only. Um, Code Wars ten percent, good for them. A lot of people like Co Code Wars. Uh, so this one kind of sad was kind of sad that less than uh, less than half have attended in-person uh, coding related events. So of the 20,000, only uh, about 40, what does that come down to? 40, 9,700. What is that? Let's not do math, right? Nine, math is hard, boys. <laughs> uh, so uh, 
I just got off work, all right? So if anybody's judging me right now, I know someone's judging me watching this video. My brain is jelly. I just got off work. Cut me some slack. But what's cool about this is you can see where people are going. I've always said meetups are great, hackathons, um, free code camp study groups. I've gone to a couple of these in the past, and a lot, you get a wide range of people. Sometimes you get a senior dev. Uh, most are on the junior end of side working through free code camp and trying to learn and get help. Um, I, I like to go to them because I particularly like teaching. I like... Um, I like um, solving, like helping people solve through issues I already understand, and until that they kind of get it. I, I enjoy that, so I like going to these things because a lot of times I'll get some help, but most of the time I'm usually helping because it's it's a, a younger or, or earlier on in your career you're getting started. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't listen to podcasts, uh, but apparently um, a good 37 uh, percent of people do. And uh, other is the largest one, so I think it goes all over the place. Code newbie is the largest one. I I, I don't know any of these, um, but it, it doesn't really surprise me that that a younger I feel like podcasts are for more of the senior developer type than anything else. When you you know maybe you got that long commute and you're trying to just better yourself. Uh, a lot of senior developers I do know do listen to these things though. Um, so that I mean that that could be bias on my end, but uh, but I, I feel like maybe maybe as a as a junior developer, some of the concepts they're talking about might be a little too advanced, or even as someone who's just learning code might be a little too advanced. So YouTube, this is the section I like. <laughs> uh, but um, so YouTube's m my number one resource when learning uh, a new framework or library. So I'm glad to see that 15,000 out of the 20,100 uh, and or 14.5 thousand of the 20k decided to take advantage of that and I, I hope that the other 5,000 start as well but three out of four uh, use YouTube 46 percent free code camp MIT uh, open courseware is cool Google developers um, the new Boston surprise surprise right uh, learn code Academy I was surprised how many people use learn code Academy I will say that um, dev ticks Derek Bonas is one of my favorites that I, I highly recommend him people ask me all the time who I watch on YouTube it's Derek Bonas the new Boston and I don't see him on here but I promise you that you guys will not you uh, you will not regret starting to follow Traversy media uh, a lot of great um, a lot of great um, tutorials coming out his way on a, on a uh, on a frequent basis and we got our boy engineer truth. Probably the only YouTube survey I will ever beat him on. But uh, And then we're, we came in at test, which is, uh, got 11% of the vote. That's pretty solid. I like that. Um, of the 20K, 6% um, of coders have attended more than 148 different boot camps. That's crazy because I consider myself kind of a boot camp connoisseur. And uh, there's not that many on here that I can... Uh, that I recognize. Uh, General Assembly, App Academy. I haven't heard of Iron Hack. The Iron Yard is common. Um, haven't heard of Lighthouse Labs. Uh, and of course, uh, Dev Mountain, who I'm who I'm sponsored by, isn't on here as well. Shame on you guys. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, um, I'm glad to see that people are going. That, that I'm glad to see there are 148 different boot camps because I feel like the majority of them are pretty pretty good. Um, 70% of people did not take out a loan to go to a boot camp. Good on you. If you're part of that 70% and you saved your money to put towards your education, good for you. And if you're part of the 30% who found yourself in the situation where you needed to take out money so that you could better your education, good on you too. Winners all around, baby. I appreciate all of you guys spending your hard-earned money or taking out a loan and paying back that hard-earned money so that you could... Uh, get yourself uh, some skills and go through the program. And it sounds like 82% of people would recommend a boot camp to their friends. That's pretty big because 18% no. Uh, that, because how many people didn't complete the boot camp or how many people signed up and thought it was going to be easy and didn't prepare? Because there's always going to be that. And that sounds like somewhere around 18% to me. So I feel like this is almost like a 100% passing rate. Um, only because I, I think there's something to be said about people who... Uh, there's always going to be a percentage of people who jump into a program and it's not for them. Or jump into a program and they don't really take it too seriously as well. Um, and I think boot camps, you get both of those people. Because you get the people who are motivated and want to learn and want to get 
uh, a good skill set and want to get some money and live a good life and are willing to work hard for it. And at the same time, you get the people who are like, ah, 10 grand. And, and it's almost like I'm guaranteed, you know, 60, 70, 80, 100 K or whatever it may be. I'll just jump into the program. So I, I do feel like they're, they're, you're, you're prone to get that good 18% as we'll call it now. Um, um, 80% are considered male. Um, uh, 19% female. And then, um, a little bit broken up into the, uh, the other genders. Gender queer, uh, I'm familiar with. Trans, I'm familiar with. Other, I'm somewhat familiar with. Agender, I guess maybe asexual. Although, I think that, the, I don't think that's gender. Um, but anyhow, the, the big thing from here is that, uh, we're all men. <laughs> like, four out of five are men. That's, that's it at the end of the day. And about the other four... The other fifth is uh, female, so better than better than it actually is in the industry right now, which is probably one in ten. So it's probably doubled the amount of females that are going to be jumping in, which is good. And here is the thing I really like here. Um, I'm 29 years old. I'm a developer. I wasn't a developer until I was, till I turned 29. Um, actually, I I turned 29 uh, three weeks after becoming a full-time developer. And so the average person, the average age of a person learning code out of the 20,000 is 28. So I know when I was, and, and you may, you know, you may be 30, 40. Don't, don't be discouraged if you're above this number. Jump right in, man. And you can see right here all the way up to 50, 60, 70, 75. There's even some 75. If you're 75 and you're learning to code, bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I'm not even religious, but I hope you are blessed because that is impressive. Now, I know when I was 25, I felt like I was getting my life, I wasn't getting my life together and all this sort of stuff. 28 right here. You're ahead of the curve, man. So, uh, and if you're a little bit older, you're, don't worry about it, guys. Just work hard and you'll get there. But uh, 28 is the average age of the person learning code. Coincidentally, I believe it's 29.6 is the median age of everybody on, on Earth. I saw that in a video the other day from CNN. Um, you can see everybody is learning to code across the map where the age is where it breaks up pretty cool 187 uh different countries 38 percent is in uh the usa which is cool to see that um 62 percent is out of uh out of the states uh learning code most live in large countries no no uh about a fourth are ethnic minorities this is an interesting question to ask on here because i don't know that it has much relevance <laughs> but but hey it's interesting at the same time um you know about 50 percent are english and then there's a bunch of other uh down below and then here's education 38 percent have a bachelor's degree 17 percent some college 12 percent a high school degree um 9% a master's degree, 7% some high school, professional degree, associate's degree, trading school, all this sort of great stuff. Um, no high school. Hmm. I guess that, that's interesting. You see that 3% or f almost 500 people are studying with, with no high school. I guess maybe in the U.S. you pretty much have to go to high school. So maybe this is out of the U.S. or unfor they just had unfortunate cir circumstances. Um, who went... And this is this is pretty you this is pretty common where you see the most common degree is computer science the next five are like business business or uh, tech and business oriented and the, so you see economics a lot and business a lot and a lot of those guys go into data scientists so if you ever talk to someone who maybe builds databases or um, is doing data analytics a lot of them have econ degrees or business degrees psychology that's interesting um, computer programming. I don't know if this is because it's a newer degree or less well-known than computer science, but I'm surprised that this one's down so low. Same with software engineering. Um, Two-thirds of us are also working. So if you if you think that you can't go to school or, or, you, or you can't work and you can't learn code, two out of three people say, nah, I'm doing it. And you can too. Um, I know I was when I was learning free code camp. So don't let that not motivate you and don't let that, you know, don't get in your head that, Oh, I have to work a full-time job. It's impossible. Uh, it's, it's, and, and, and by the way, to those two thirds and to congrats to everybody learning to code, but to those two thirds, good for you, man. I want you right now. And you may not be where you are, want to be in life, but I want you to 
to look at yourself and just appreciate yourself a little bit more because it's hard, man. I've done that. I've gone, I've worked, and I had to, you know, after working four, eight, 12 hour days and had to go and say, look, I don't care. I, I'm doing my hour of code on those 12 hour days. On those eight hour days, I'm doing my three hours of code. On those four hour days, I'm doing my eight hours of code. Whatever it is, I'm doing it. And, you know, it's hard. You got to grind it out. And good for you guys. I hope you guys appreciate that you grinding it out. You'll get there, man. Um, half of us are working in a software field. This is a pre it's pretty impressive, which is my, my case. I was working at a uh, software company as a technology trainer doing videos and uh, getting requirements and, and doing uh, technical documentation occasion, a little bit of UI, UX in terms of wireframing and user flow. So I fall into this category. So I guess I'm not that unique is what I'm trying to say. 38% um, of people travel at least one hour to and from work. That fucking sucks, man. That sucks. Uh, spend at least one hour traveling to and from. That's, that, that's fucked up, man. Uh, that, I think this is another reason why so many people want to uh, be a developer uh, in terms of a remote developer, anyhow. Uh, two out of three new coders are single. Um, that's interesting. 8% of coders have served in their country's military. This doesn't surprise me. There is a... But maybe it's because I work at a company with a military background, so... 15% um, have children. This is surprising. I always assume many people have more children. <laughs> than just like i felt like i i'm in the minority of not having children but maybe i'm wrong um 44 consider themselves underemployed that's why you're that's why the you know a lot of you guys are trying to better yourself so not to be there 23 have student loan debt that sucks uh and a home mortgage all right 15 percent. this is the real travesty 15 percent of people don't have high speed internet at home that's that's unfortunate um I I love that Quincy releases the data and I look forward to every time he does this and I hope you guys look and see that you're it, even at times you may feel that you're a little behind or not where you want to be and and all that sort of stuff just appreciate that you're in the grind and you're going there and if you like Quincy's articles as I do make sure you follow him and get an email at, or go to medium.freecodecamp.com I enjoy all this stuff, man, and I hope you guys stay motivated. It's hard learning how to code, guys. I, I won't, I won't lie to you, but it takes, it takes grind, it takes devotion, and it takes, it takes feeling good while you're doing it, and think, and you're not getting paid to do it yet, right? Uh, it's just a hobby until you get paid, and but you'll get there, and I hope you see that of those twenty thousand people, they believe they're gonna get there, and they will. As long as they stick with it. I hope you guys stick with it. Stay motivated. Work hard. Don't forget to join our Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. And if you like this video, like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding boot camp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.